if you're an aunt or an aunt, you know how fun it can be to spend time with your nieces and nephews. But let's face it, you might also kind of get a sense of relief when you get to go home alone at the end of the day, child free. You may also have experienced feelings of jealousy or resentment or confusion about your role. So I am very, very happy to welcome to the show to talk about some aunt do's and don'ts, Melanie Notkin. She is the founder of SavvyAuntie.com, which is a wonderful website. And Natalie Garfield, who's a psychotherapist and a contributor to Savvy Auntie. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about how you came up with Savvy Auntie. I take it you are a Savvy Auntie. I am. I am an aunt. I'm an aunt actually to six kids, an um, aunt by relation and an aunt by choice to mm-hmm. many, many others. And mm-hmm. have always been known as Auntie Melanie since mm-hmm. I've been an adult. And I realized after, shortly after my nephew was born that there weren't any modern resources for the cosmopolitan aunt, that everything was sort of old Aunt Sadie. Yeah. And I, wanted, I had an Aunt Mabel, though, who was very hip and very cool. Well, I am name. sure she was. I'm sure she was. But there was nothing hip and cool for the ants of the modern day. Um, the best thing I could find was a little cheesy onesie that mm-hmm. said, you know, if you think I'm cute, you should see my aunt. And right. I wanted a badge of honor. I wanted a place to call home. There are all these parenting sites online and places and resources for parents to go. But I wanted something so that I could be the best and most savvy auntie to my nephew and as he got a little older I realized no matter how savvy I was in my career literally jetting back and forth to Paris when it came to the most important children in my life people in my life I wasn't very savvy at all what what is special about the relationship between an aunt and her nieces and nephews I I think partly partly what you said that you can leave but that's the plus and the minus (laughs) because lots of aunts don't want to leave and they want to have a closer relationship they want to have more impact Mm -hmm. they want to have more control right so it's both ways and you have to walk that fine line yeah and and one of the things you know certainly I've experienced as an aunt and also as a niece um, is is that you often are willing to confide in your aunt or aunts may be privy to information that their siblings don't know about mm-hmm. and that must be a very tough call to make I know it's been tough for me but mm-hmm. uh, you know one of my nieces or nephews will, will confide in me and then I'm just not sure whether I really should say look I can't keep this confidence I'm going to share this with your mom um, you know my sister or not mm-hmm. what, what do you generally advise well, I think partly what Melanie has done with Savvy Auntie is legitimized the role and made it an identity. Mm-hmm. And that it still will take time for aunts to fit into that identity, but right. as an aunt, to talk to your sister, sister in law, whoever mm-hmm. it may be. Right. You know, in New York, we laugh about location, location, location. <laughs> in relationships, we laugh and cry. Communication, communication, communication. Right, right. And finding a way to do that in a, in a way that's supportive as opposed exactly. to, you know, telling. I, I know that, you know, one of the things that, again, comes up probably even on your website, I think there was a question from one of your um, visitors, one of your aunties, yes. was that she sensed that her sister was very jealous of her relationship with, I don't know whether it was a niece or a nephew. Yeah, I believe it was a nephew, you're right. Or maybe it was a niece, you're right. Yeah, um, yeah because she was living, actually, with the parents to help them. They... They were unfortunately, I believe, victims of the recession, and Mm -hmm. she was there to help them cope and manage the children. And of course, she ended up being almost a a stay-at-home auntie with her her niece or nephew. And the mom realized that she wasn't spending as much time, and the child seemed to be bonding, in the mother's eyes, more closely with the aunt. Now, what's interesting, you mentioned that that was on our forums. One of the reasons why I called the site Savvy Auntie isn't because I'm by far the savviest auntie. I'm not. But rather because as ants, we all have our own savoir faire. We all have our own savvy. And so many of the women who go to the site were able to respond. And one woman had a wonderful response, and that was, why don't you encourage the mom to have special time with the child? And you'll take care of everything else in the meantime. So, you know, our number one rule at Savvy Auntie, really, is that parents come first. Right. That we are there to help the parents, mm-hmm. to nurture the relationship between ourselves, of course, and our nieces and nephews, but also with the relationship 
relationship with the parent and child. Right. And their rules come first, and we're there to support them. So, um, and in fact, actually, that's something similar to what the aunt did, and all's well now. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think the other thing that often comes up is if you're the aunt and your niece or nephew is not behaving the way you think you would have asked, you know, you would expect them to behave, or, you know, your sibling is not disciplining them in a way that you think you would if they were your children, mm -hmm. that's a very, also a tough line to, to, mm -hmm. to maneuver because it, it is okay to say, look, I, you know, I'm finding that you know, so you know, little Johnny is is whining a lot. You know, when he doesn't get his way. Would you suggest that you say to your sibling, you know, how do you want me to handle that, or do you feel that it's okay to say, look, when he spends time with me, this is what I expect, and just deal with the child directly. I think the first step in that is a little compassion mm -hmm. from aunts to the parents. Right. That although it's been in our society that the parents are sort of the power figures and the right. aunts are secondary, okay. those power figures experience an enormous amount of insecurity. Right, right. And to talk to your sister, sister-in-law about how she feels, right. or he, it can even be the father. Yeah. And to, to have compassion for, yeah, they are uncomfortable, but they don't know what to do, rather than come in as, I know what you should do. Right, right. And you've talked a little bit about um, the fact that if you're a young aunt, as you mm -hmm. are, that you feel that sometimes you don't get the respect that you want, uh, you know, that, that in fact you're not the authority, and but you're expected to be sort of the fun aunt, but that that can be that can be kind of a two-way street. Well, there. it could be a cliche. You mm -hmm. know, the cliche is that women without children, no matter what their age, whether they're 20, 30, 40, or older, aren't really true adults because oh. they don't have children of their own. They haven't reached that next generation. Right. And in fact, that if you look at women, you know, carefully one-on-one -on -one who don't have children, you'll notice, of course, that that's really not true. Right. And that if we spend a little time, instead of being really judgmental over these mm -hmm. women about what they don't seem to contribute to society, i.e. children, <laughs> what they do contribute to what I call the American family village. Mm -hmm parents more than ever need our help and if parents understand that we're there with hands and hugs at mm -hmm. the ready to help enable them to nurture these children then I think we're all better off and the, the most beneficial of all this of course are the children right no that's a really good point I mean I think the, the, the you know the last question I have because I think this is again something we've all experienced if we're aunts or uncles is that sometimes you can be taken advantage of or you can feel resentful that you know suddenly you're handed the kids you're expected to baby said you're expected to jump in there and you may not want to you may not really feel you're capable of doing it how do you handle that is it possible to say no I'm sorry I, I just can't be that kind of an aunt right now I think it's absolutely possible and necessary but again c communication yeah so with Savvy Auntie as a source and a legitimizing agent if you will then there can be talk about now I'm an aunt and now you're a mother right. and what are our roles right. and how do they divvy up and can that be changed at any point it right. really it, and of course it does change as the kids get older it seems to sure. change all the time sure it does yeah Having mutual respect yeah. you know understanding that women who don't have children still have other responsibilities and they fill right. their lives with other things yeah um, but that we are ready uh, and hands at the ready when we are called upon certainly in an emergency right. certainly when it comes to loving and indulging these children great well that's wonderful advice lots of other great advice on savvyauntie.com thank you so much no, 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 and now we thank are you. ABC News Now. Good to know.